DiscerningHearts.com presents Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors. I'm your host, Chris McGregor, and I am delighted to be joined once again by Kathleen Beckman, who is the president of the Foundation of Prayer for Priests. She has served the church for 25 years as an international Catholic evangelist, author, Ignatian retreat director, and radio host, and is often featured on EWTN TV and radio. For over a decade, Kathleen has served on the diocesan exorcist team and is the administrator of her diocese exorcism and deliverance ministry. She completed the Association of International Exorcist Rome course, Exorcism and Prayers of Liberation. She sits on the advisory boards of the Pope Leo XIII Institute and Magnificat, a ministry to Catholic women. She is the author of three books, Praying for Priests, God's Healing Mercy, and When Women Pray. With Kathleen Beckman, we go inside the pages of A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing, published by Sophia Institute Press. Kathleen, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Chris, for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity because I really support your ministry and am grateful to uh, be with you this morning. I was so excited when I, at first when I heard you were writing a book about this, but then even more so when I finally got in my hands, A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for the hard work that you did to put this book together. Well, thank you, Chris. It was a lot of hard work and it was years in the making, of course. And there was so much that I wanted to share. I was hesitant to have a book that was 300 pages on one hand, but then, you know, working with editors at Sophia Institute Press, we realized that each component in the book was very important. I didn't want to simply speak about spiritual warfare and the darkness without giving a lot of attention to the light and to the victory of Christ and to give the tools to overcome the darkness. So it is a a pretty comprehensive book. Well, there have been many people that have attempted to provide the information they feel people need, and, and families too, I would say. Just for those who are listening in the audience out there, I can give a personal testimony to having known Kathleen and knowing your background, having watched you walk the walk, and how balanced you are. I just think you're one of the, the best lay communicators of this important message. And anybody that would pick up this book, I can uh, just tell you, you're a great resource, a real gift to the church. So thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Chris. I I mean, it's all grace of God, as you know well. It's, It's pure grace and providence that he allowed me to have such a deep formation in this ministry. Of course, not of my choice, but always by the invitation of bishops and priests. And the Lord took great care, I think, to form me in the way of the teachings of the church. And I felt like it's really my my privilege and my duty to share what I've been given as a gift uh, to others. And having traveled to 13 different countries and really interfacing with countless Catholics and hearing the stories of Catholic families the concerns for spouses and children and grandchildren and extended families, you know, I really felt there was a need to provide some sort of a resource because the church does provide a wealth of resources for those who are suffering from demonic oppression or possession. What I love about it is the tone of the work, the information that is given of how you communicate all of this, Kathleen. Believe it or not, I mean, all I could feel was a maternal nature to it. It's not just for women. It's not, it's for those who are leaders in the family, men and women. But the way you communicate it, I have to say, there's something about your style. It feels very Marian. That was intentional. And you have just said something that honored me. And I'm so grateful. I have goosebumps when you said that because that was my prayer, Chris. And several people have interviewed me and 
None have picked it up as clearly as you have. That was my prayer. I wanted to come at this work from the heart of Mary. I have read many wonderful spiritual warfare books, many from colleagues who who are exorcists who really give excellent information. I think what distinguishes mine is that I'm coming from a very maternal heart as a wife and a mother and as one who has walked with many people in these cases of deliverance and exorcism. And it was very intentional. My entire prayer was let the heart of Mary shine through this book. So thank you for pointing that out. I think the person who is going to want this book, it's for moms, it's for dads. I think it's important for grandparents Mm -hmm. to have this. It's also important for priests because it articulates the dialogue that they can provide all those families that are in the pews of their particular parish. I think this is one of the most important books in this area because the battle is real, isn't it, Kathleen? It is very real. It's very real. And I I just want to speak to your comment about it's a book for priests and religious sisters. Uh, A Mm -hmm. wonderful sister from the Disciples of the Lord Jesus just made a video saying, you know, a lot of people come and turn to the sisters and to the priests for help with their families. And she held up the book in the video and she said, get this book because this is the help that you really need. And so I really appreciate it. I do think that priests and bishop, including Bishop Olmsted and Bishop Propaki and Bishop Van, who endorsed the book, and Bishop Grob now, our mutual friend, they are grateful, I think, to be able to have a resource. I know many priests have handed the book out to people who they counsel as well. But as far as the battle is real, absolutely. And, you know, the battle is very pointed at the family. And as I point out in the book, in the second chapter, Schooled in the Art of Spiritual Combat, I share, Chris, about the class that I took in Rome, the Association of International Exorcists Rome course on prayers for liberation from evil. And in that course, Cardinal Amato gave a beautiful conference regarding the message of Fatima and, of course, the prophecy of Sister Lucia of Fatima about the final attack of the devil will be against marriage and family. And I think many people relate to that. Oh, I absolutely agree with you. And in that particular section, again, it's the school in the art of spiritual combat. I just want to say it again for the audience. You are probably one of the most highly educated persons I know in this field. You have gone right to the font not only in America, but internationally, to learn what's so necessary for us to have in our spiritual lives. And, but you've also lived it. And when I say that, I mean, you have been for, can, can we say, a couple decades at least, involved in the actual ministry that you write about. So you're a trusted resource in this. So everything you're bringing forward is rock solid. Well, thank you. You know, I'm a a daughter of the church, as are you, Chris. And so the church has a lot to offer people. And I see this, you know, people of all faiths, when they really want to be set free from demonic suffering, they find their way to the Catholic priest. They find their way to the bishop's office seeking help. And the church responds to that in a beautiful way. There are protocols, and I share that in the book, the procedure of seeing The exorcist is one very much like seeing the surgeon. And so the medical model is very often used as the kind of protocol. You know, you don't immediately see a surgeon when you're when you're sick. You go to your local doctor, your regular doctor, and you have an exam and there's a history and there's testing and that type of thing does Mm -hmm. occur, as you know, with protocols for people who are seeking the ministry of the church for healing and deliverance. That's so important that you brought that forward because there is something very vital about the order that is available to us through the ministry of the church. And part of that order is, yes, and I I don't know how much we can get into it just in this short time that we have to talk about, but that is through the priest. But the real purpose in a very vital way that this book, for those who have been appointed through that order, through the the father to the pope, to who comes through the bishops, who appoint the priests, 
who through the sacrament of baptism gives a special role to the mother and father of a family. That's right. That's right. And that's really one of the keynotes of the book. And that's the tripod of the foundation of spiritual warfare in the family that includes this idea of spiritual authority, which is very real and powerful. The demons know well who has spiritual authority. And so by that, I mean that, you know, we have our baptismal authority. Thanks be to God. It is a real and dynamic authority that is given to us when we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that mark on our forehead, that mark on our soul, is seen and known by the evil spirits. Because during an exorcism, what is I've heard and witnessed, what's happening is that the exorcist priest is saying to the demon who is troubling this poor soul, who wants liberation, who seeks conversion of life, who seeks freedom now, and is turning to Christ and the church for help, what the priest is saying to the demon is, you can't have him because he already is marked for Christ. So he is, the exorcist is claiming the soul because Christ has claimed him at baptism. So it's very real. And the demon honors that, that he has to honor that. That's a very real dynamic. So thanks be to God for our baptismal authority. Furthermore, when a couple gets married, they have spousal authority. Now, I, I took great care to research how this works. So we know that scripture teaches about the spousal authority of the husband for the wife and the children. But I was wondering about and wanted to clarify about the woman And what the theologians and priests, they taught me was that the woman in the sacrament of matrimony, the man and the woman minister that sacrament to one another. And therefore, by that sacrament of matrimony, the woman has a mantle of authority for her husband as well, so that she can pray deliverance prayers and blessing prayers to reciprocate the husband's prayers and blessings. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. And I'm so glad that you went further and researched that because that's kind of a, that, that's not always made very clear, is it? No, it's not. And that's why, you know, it's, um, and, I, and I do articulate it in the book, explaining it in detail about how, and it, that makes a lot of sense. That's what Father Ripperker has said, and my own diocesan exorcist here has said, and others have really confirmed that for me. And then then we move into the spiritual authority that parents have over children. And this is a very dynamic authority, and it doesn't end when the child is an adult. So I just want to encourage listeners today that no matter how old your child is, that you have a very dynamic prayer authority. You can pray deliverance prayers. You can pray and binding prayers and casting prayers so that you can really keep ministering to your son or daughter as they mature in life so that you want to exercise that paternal authority. So these different authorities that are given to us, as I said, were, are very much known to the evil spirits. And they honor them because they have to, by God's providence and power. So I really encourage people to know the spiritual authority that they have and to exercise it. We talked about the Blessed Mother and why this particular work has such a maternal nurturing nature to it. There's that moment in Fatima where she's telling the children, you have to learn how to read. You have to go, you have to attain knowledge. What you do in this book it is in that those first four sections is you're giving people the knowledge they need. It's like, okay, you're a Christian. You need to be aware of this. You give all this background, which is steeped in scripture, as well as the teachings of the church. And then you make it very clear for everybody. You've learned, you've got the knowledge. Okay, now let's go in and show it what it looks like in the family. That's right. That's right. I tried to make it very practical. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, some people have said that they never look at appendices in a book. And I would encourage readers to not miss these appendices because 
The first one is the Appendix of Prayer, which is over 40 pages of some original prayers, which I wrote in front of the Blessed Sacrament and, and received the Nihil Obstat and the Imprimatur for, along with some from Exorcist Friends, and beautiful prayers. And then the final appendix is the case studies, which really makes it concrete for the reader mm -hmm. to read about other family situations and how they got entangled, if you will, with evil spirits and how they got out of it and how the whole process occurred. And so these are very practical teaching lessons and they're real life stories. And so people are relating to them. And so those are, are all the way in the appendix. Those ap appendices could really be books in themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was, I'm like, whoa. I mean, the, the prayers are absolutely phenomenal. I loved them. That was perfect. I think the case studies, I don't want to make them sound so clinical, but that helps to show us how this can look. That, yes. Not that it's necessarily going to be the exact thing that you're experiencing or you might experience in the future. Um, I think those are important, aren't they? I think so. And people really appreciated it. And I know many clergy commented that they appreciated the case studies. And we thought about just making a book like that. And sometimes I thought about breaking this up into two different, like um, the censor librarian for the diocese said, why don't you do one book on deliverance and one book on exorcism? And so he helped me to organize this in a way that we could put it all together. So it's packed in there, but there's a lot that people can learn. It's, it's pretty comprehensive. I encourage people to read those first four chapters first, but there are, are those times when you, you may find yourself just opening it up and that will be exactly what you need to see in that moment. Yes, I think so. I would hope so. There's a lot of anecdotes in there, a lot of stories from teachers, you know, I've had some of the best priest professors, exorcist professors, including our mutual friend. Monsignor John SF. There's plenty of Monsignor SF stories in there. Always so interesting and such a good teacher. Even a word that he gave me pertaining to fathers and the family and what's happening now. We were in a telephone conversation at the beginning of COVID. And, you know, he's very much a spiritual father, as you know. And for listeners, we're talking about Monsignor John Essef. And he gives advice even in this book. He knew I was writing it and he kind of interceded and fathered me along the way. So there's plenty of stories from him inside the book, which I think readers will find very helpful. The anecdotes regarding families, you know, I think uh, one of the important chapters too is the language of spiritual combat, because the language matters. In spiritual warfare, distinctions need to be made. I want people to feel like they're being heard and part of that is being able to articulate what they're experiencing. And so terminology matters. If a person feels that they have some demonic, you know, suffering or activity going on, it will help them to get the help they need if they know some of the terms and what they mean. I think I'll give an example for the listeners. So we're advised that people would say a binding prayer. Mm -hmm. So in the book, I describe what is that? A binding prayer is a prayer to Jesus to bind evil spirits that are tempting or oppressing you or someone in your family for whom you have spiritual authority, like your spouse or your child. And here's an example. Spirit of, say you're feeling spirit of anger. I bind you in the name of Jesus by the power of the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Michael the Archangel, and the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints. And I command you to leave my son and go to the foot of the cross to receive your sentence in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's a binding prayer that can be said, and, you know, and can be very effective when we are interceding for our loved ones. We'll return to Inside the Pages in just a moment. Did you know that Discerning Hearts has a free app in which you can find all your favorite Discerning Hearts programming? Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Deacon James Keating, Mike Aquilina, Dr. Matthew Bunsen, and so many more are found on the Discerning Hearts free app. Did you also know that you can stream Discerning Hearts programming on numerous streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, 
iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and so many more. And did you know that Discerning Hearts also has the YouTube page? Be sure to check out all these different places where you can find Discerning Hearts. A Prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malignant enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, my name is Deacon Omar Gutierrez, and I want to ask you to support Discerning Hearts in a special way. We, Chris McGregor, the board, and I all know that not everyone listening can help financially. We know we have listeners from all parts of the world, and we have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truths shared through Discerning Hearts totally free. So while you may not be able to contribute financially, what you can do is certainly pray, but also give us positive reviews on whatever platform you use to listen to us. If it's iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, however it is that you get these podcasts, or if you're on YouTube and you like our videos, please give us a good rating and write a review. The more good ratings and reviews we get, the higher our profile, and the more listeners will discover us, listeners who may have the means to contribute in the future. Please consider rating us and writing a positive review today. We now return to Inside the Pages. We're talking with Kathleen Beckman about her book, A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing. Not only have you drawn from some of the, uh, I, I, I want to say this just in the right reverential way, but all I can think of is the word mighty, you know, the great lights, those exorcists who have taught as well as lived this in their own ministry. Thinking of Father Rippinger, I'm thinking of uh, Father Dennis McManus, as you mentioned, Monsignor John Essif. There are so many others, but you have compiled just because of your experience and wisdom in that and having lived in a family, how can we best utilize those for our ministry in our vocation as those family members. Right. And I really focus on the domestic church. You know, I I really feel, as I say in the book, that our home should be demon-free zones. And we need to understand how, when we are walking with the Lord, when we are in right order, and we are in the state of grace, and we know how to talk back to any evil temptation using scripture, the way the Lord talked back to the demon when he was tempted, then actually the demons fear us. And we are really empowered so that we can look at our what's going on in our domestic church, what's going on with my spouse, what's going on with my child, and call it out so that everyone in that household can live the joy of the Lord and the freedom of the Lord. And we are all tempted, you know, The book is not, and I say this in my um, preface, this is not a book about exorcism, which is for a possessed person, which is still relatively rare, although increasing in our day and time because of the spirit of the world and the devil taking advantage of it. But for the most part, their activity within our homes is what we would call the normal activity of a demon, which would be temptation. And that temptation is quite dangerous, um, even though it's categorized as ordinary, if we give in to the sin, because sin is one of the five foremost portals for an evil spirit. So, you know, what does that mean? And in the book, as you know, I encourage families to hold one another accountable, to not slip things under the rug, like not pretend that you're not concerned that a spouse may be looking at pornography or a child may be looking at pornography. If, you, if the Holy Spirit prompts you to sense this, 
then in the book, I really invite you to bring it to the light. Did you pick that up, Chris? Oh, I did. It is so, again, very practical, Kathleen. I think it's the best resource in this particular area because you give each section so much clarity, like the, the six categories of demonic activity. I think it's important for people to see that. And as you said, it's so true. Temptation is the greatest and it can do the most damage because it can affect generations That's because, right. of, because of the choices that we've made. That's right. It's so serious, but sometimes it's the most obvious things or it, it seems so prevalent to us. The sadness is, is that it's overlooked right. or taken for granted the remedies that we have. And what I love in this book is that you have so much scripture. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's the desert fathers use that scripture to fight the enemy. That's right. And that's really what, and we all have that weapon of the scripture. It's part of dressing the family in the armor of God, which is one whole chapter. But, you know, learning how to talk back with scripture, that's a, I took that from the great Father Dennis McManus, a wonderful exorcist and, and teacher, and he gave a talk. And the title of the conference was Talk Back. And he taught us to talk back. This was for lay people. This wasn't for the clergy now. This was for mm-hmm. lay people. And he said, talk back in the way that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke back to the devil when he was tempted in the desert. And what did Jesus do? Well, he quoted scripture. And that's exactly what we're called to do when we're feeling those fiery darts of the enemy. And the way Father McManus stated it was, God does not intend for us all day long to just endure these fiery darts of the enemy. We have to stop when they come and deal with them and talk back with scripture, chase the the devil away with scripture. So I love that because so often people just sit there and, you know, we can take the temptation all day long and we just get very beaten down. And that's not really what we're called to do. We're called to fight back. And when I feel that fiery dart of the enemy coming at me, whether it's discouragement, you know, discouragement, as the church father said, is one of the most serious temptations. Because what happens when we are discouraged? Well, we're more likely to turn away from God and to turn towards something other than God. And then we can start to, you know, give the devil a foothold because we have turned away from God, because we're just discouraged, you know, that, that dryness and um, that discouragement. So that is something we, we need to fight against with scripture. So many things, this book, the, A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing, it's so rich, it's so practical. You, you know, just another example of that is, I love this. I, I think that you should have this on your refrigerator. Just the strategies, engage your weapons, know what your weapons are, Christian. I saw that and I thought, yes, they are our weapons. And how many of us know that they're in our quiver? We walk around and we we just get clobbered over and over again. And yet there's a way for freedom. Absolutely. I think one of the unique things in the book, Chris, is this strategy of keeping the Ten Commandments. Now that seems so foundational and absolutely basic. But what I discovered when I review the intake forms for people who are seeking exorcism or deliverance, so that's their history. You know, it's like they're looking at their chart, their history of how did they get to this point of needing the church's ministry of healing or exorcism. And often the common denominator in every single case was the breaking of the Ten Commandments many or even just some of them. And so in the book, I mention, I go into depth about the ten, keeping the Ten Commandments, but I do so by mentioning their diabolical counterpart, because the demons want to, to mock all things of God. And so he mocks those Ten Commandments. And so you'll find in one of the chapters, The Family Covenant of Protection, a real teaching on the Ten Commandments and the Beatitudes and their diabolical counterparts. Did you pick that up? Oh, yeah. That's an important thing to understand that, that there's usually where there is light, there is a darkness, but darkness has no power. Sometimes we forget that. What dispels the darkness is more light. Right. The more that you bring into it, and the church gives you that 
over and over again. I, I think it's those 13 different points, as I said earlier, that where the strategy to engage your weapons, if you do that, you are good stead. I mean, that you brought not just a lamp into your house, you brought a lighthouse. That's right, Chris. And I think that a lot of times it's really just getting back to the basics. I mean, even like the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Mm-hmm. I mean, think of idols in the world today. You know, I, I convict myself of that. The times when I have made even my own husband or children an idol above God. Mm. Even when I've made my family, as I share a story, a personal anecdote in the, in the book about how I had a dream. I don't often dream, but in this dream, I was trying to build the perfect family, Chris. Mm-hmm. And I wanted everything to be so perfect, you know, and how many of us, you know, want that for our families, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, that really, then I entered into co- trying to control everyone and everything. And, and in the dream, I was on the floor trying to build the perfect house and the perfect family out of in these, with these blocks. Mm-hmm. And every time I would get to the point of the house being built out of blocks, it would fall apart in my dream. And then in the dream, the Lord came and sat on the floor with me and he just said, are you ready to let me build it? Mm. And I think that's really what he's saying in the, throughout the book. Let, let him build our, our marriages. Let the Lord build our families. Give over control. Make him first in the family. You know, put the house in order because the domestic church has such a vital role uh, in the broader church and in the culture and the world. It's meant to be the salt and the light and the yeast. It's meant to be what changes the world. And so, you know, it's a real call for families to be who we're, who we're meant to be, who God has designed us to be. Boy, I wish we had more time because I, I do. I love this book. I could Piece by piece, there's a gem on every page, Kathleen, a family guide to spiritual warfare, strategies for deliverance and healing. But there is a subject I'd like to touch on because you have such an incredible background and and just a grace-filled wisdom on this particular subject that I think you might be able to help some people who might be a little confused. And that's in the area of deliverance ministry. And what... You talk about it in the book. There is a section on it, healing through deliverance ministry. But there is a, an appropriate way in which to look at it, maybe, just to, to find that the healthy balance and how it should and could be looked at in the lives of ordinary people. Yes, and I think that who who you know came to set the captives free and deliver us from the power of sin and to destroy the works of the devil. So it's a ministry of love and mercy, of, uh, love and mercy a ministry of the whole church. And it's minor exorcism. And often it's really praying. It's much deeper than people realize to pray away anything related to wounds that we may have from the past or from sin patterns that we have, weaknesses that we have. So God provides this beautiful ministry, which we call deliverance ministry, which is really delivering from anything, any obstacle that is getting between me and a deeper walk with the Lord. So I, in the book, I talk about how, you know, the husbands and wives can pray deliverance prayers for one another and how they can pray for their children, deliverance prayers. And it's explained in the book. There's many examples of deliverance prayers. It's very much a part of healing. And the Christian idea of healing is the reordering of the faculties that have been damaged because of our sins and the sins of others. Healing reorients a person's heart and life so that nothing comes between him and God. So healing is about being free enough to be receptive to God's love and convinced of our identity as his beloved child. So knowing our true identity is what sets us free and which empowers us to proclaim the victory of Jesus Christ over evil spirits. Mm, Wow. And that is something that it's important to journey with others. And it has to start where he's planted you first. Really, it needs to take root in that family, doesn't it? I believe so. 
And I did it kind of backwards because, you know, I went family and I didn't recognize it in the family until my family was so terribly wounded. Personally, I didn't recognize the need for deliverance and healing in my family until my father-in-law was brutally murdered. And that just, it was a trauma in my life. It was a trauma that it, in a way, shattered an innocence that I had. And seeing how another human being can cause, you know, something like that to happen, to beat another human being to death. That was an awakening and that was like an explosion of evil in my own family. And so I learned it firsthand there, the need for healing of my own wound, the healing of my own trauma from that and needing to reorient myself to the Lord Jesus, to the cross, because it's the first time that the cross had weighed so heavy upon our family. There were members of my family, as I share in, this, in the book, that ran from that cross. And, and thanks be to God, by his grace, I ran to the cross, especially to the Blessed Sacrament. And I needed great healing personally after that murder. And so, you know, these are the things that we've all been, I would say most, many people have been loved imperfectly and wounded in this ministry of retreat work that I do. And I share some of the stories in the book. There are people who come to retreat, Chris, and they tell stories. They're carrying a weight on their back that's so heavy from a word that was given to them from their spouse or their parent 50 years ago. It's weighing on them and it's a burden on them. And, you know, I encourage them to bring it to the light and to let the Lord heal that particular wound caused by the imperfection of human love. And, you know, God, God provides a remedy for that in giving us his heart. And so your beautiful ministry of discerning hearts, it's all about the heart. And in the book, I talk about the heart of the family. Mm-hmm. Did you catch that? You know, how the, the, yeah, the heart of the family and how the heart of the family has to be placed in the heart of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the heart of Jesus is the heart of the eternal high priest. It's the heart of the chief exorcist. It's the victorious heart. It's the risen heart. And so that overcomes all evil and darkness. So hopefully the book leaves people with a real sense of hope. Oh, well, I'm hoping that everybody gets a copy. I love it. (laughs) A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing. It is about healing and being set free. A deliverance. That's what deliverance is. You're being set free from captivity. Right. And, uh, you know, Kathleen, I, gosh, I wish we had more time. I really do. This is, but that's the beauty of it. I hope people will get a copy of this. And any final thoughts, Kathleen? Oh, I just can't believe we run out of time. But um, any final thoughts? I would just encourage listeners to be vigilant and to be valiant in your families and to strive for the virtues, strive to overcome vice with virtue by prioritizing your family, protecting them in the way that God calls you to, and to promote the beauty and the fruitfulness of marriage and family by your witness. I want to encourage listeners, don't give up. And as, as I say in the book, even if you are the only intercessor for the family. Even if you're the only one who is walking with the Lord, don't give up because God can do mighty things through one intercessor in every family. Mm, Beautiful. Yes, I I hope, you know, as, as you were saying that, it just occurred to me too, that this is a wonderful gift to give to new parents. And how wonderful if a family at its very the beginnings, the origin, or as a wedding gift, as a marriage gift to a young couple, someone who's gone through RCIA, they, they really, you really want to give them this book because this is a manual for living the Christian life. Well, I, I hope so. And I know, I wish I knew what was in the book when I was getting married, Chris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. It's absolutely wonderful, Kathleen. And God bless you for all the work you do. And please, for listeners out there, visit foundationforpriests.org. Kathleen is also the president of the Foundation of Prayer for Priests. And boy, do our priests need those prayers right now. Absolutely. In fact, the, the book ends with the story of a priest 
who struggled with some demonic attacks when he was in the hospital. So his story is in there. And I end the book with inviting people to please spiritually adopt our priests and to become part of the Army of Intercessors for Priests at foundationforpriests.org. Kathleen Beckman, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you, Chris. With Kathleen Beckman, we've gone inside the pages of A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing. To learn more about this book or to obtain a copy, go to sophiainstitute.com. The website for its publisher, Sophia Institute Press. Or you can find it at any fine Catholic bookstore. To hear and or to download this conversation, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about discerninghearts.com and join us next time for Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors.